Angela. Hi. And thank you so much for joining me in uh, in in a chat about sustainability and uh, sustainability communication in this uh, in this uh, context. So um, you just finished your dissertation mm -hmm. uh, from MA Fashion Entrepreneurship and Innovation. Yeah. Congratulations and a way to uh, <laughs> I want to. Uh, I want to. I have a couple of questions. I want to uh, uh, talk to you about your dissertation topic. And uh, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about your topic? Yeah. Um. So my topic is basically um, exploring how um, online education channels could be utilized by fashion brands. And for my dissertation, it focused on slow fashion brands. Um, to bridge basically to to bridge um, this phenomena called the um, attitude behavior gap. Yeah. So basically, looking at what are the most efficient ways of communicating sustainability today, mm -hmm. yeah. given uh, an audience who are very used to uh, online platforms, social mm -hmm. media, mm -hmm. uh, and not necessarily going in and reading long csr yeah. or sustainability yeah. reports yeah oh that's interesting so what inspired you to uh, to uh, explore this topic well it started because um i started this business this slow fashion business called fields and ferns mm -hmm. and being um being someone who owns a brand but also at the same time being a consumer i realized that there are there, there's this gap between consumers' positive attitudes towards sustainability and their um, positive attitudes towards creating change and wanting to support these businesses, but yeah. not necessarily translating it to purchasing and sales. And that um, is unfortunate for, for, you know, for me as well, who owns Fields and Ferns, mm -hmm. because it's crucial. We need that to survive. And um, so that was the basis of why it intrigued me. The yeah. Topic. Yeah. And what is your own brand doing, Fields and Fern? So we um, we produce sustainable um, accessories and clothing, and we try to use waste. So that's the main, that's the essence of the uh, brand. We yeah. utilize waste for our clothing. We use dead stock fabric that we acquire from London factories that would otherwise be thro thrown away. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so that's the whole basis of it. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. So you, so you focused on the communication side. Mm -hmm. How do I communicate about my brand? Mm -hmm. What are the, what are the barriers to reaching consumers, and what are the potential opportunities? So what, so in your research, what did you discover in terms of the barriers? What are the problems here in mm -hmm. terms of communicating to consumers? So from my research, discovered that there are. Um, some determinants to why they don't end up purchasing from sustainable brands. Mm -hmm. And the um, obvious ones includes, you know, they didn't have much knowledge and this partly is from greenwashing and they also, their values, their needs doesn't align with the brand. Sometimes their behavior isn't aligning with the brand as well. So that was part of, um, that was the consumer side of the story. Yeah. And so what I did um, for my research is try to map out what the businesses are doing at the moment. What are they currently trying to do to overcome those challenges? And I discovered that um, aside from utilizing, you know, social media like Instagram, Facebook, and their website, there was one channel that was um, quite only one brand did that basically in my research and they were utilizing podcasting yeah and it was quite interesting because um, after interviewing them and seeing how their consumers respond to the podcast it's amazing it's way more powerful than an Instagram post because what I discovered is that Podcasting allows you to be up and close and personal. It's it's a voice. It gives you just enough in which you can talk about 
um, things in depth rather than, um, you know, when you post an a sto um, Instagram post, you can only post, I think, around 200 um, in, in length or a blog post, which nobody really goes there anymore. And with podcasting, you can talk about something in depth, but in a more relaxed manner, in a more authentic manner. Yeah. And so people get to know your personality and the people behind the brand and the value and they empathize with you as well. And that is really inspiring to them. Mm. And then they end up consumers end up um, building this very personal bond with the brand and putting them as sort of their friend, you know, someone that they want to support, someone that they want to um, know the updates to. It's that continual matter as well. Um, every week or every two weeks, they're looking forward to it. And yeah, it, it ended up being such a crucial tool in actually uh, helping brands communicate with consumers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's quite. Uh, I, I, it's really interesting what you're saying. This, uh, this uh, growth in podcast. So it's becoming more and more popular. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily talking about sustainability from a, a, um, a fashion company point of view, mm -hmm. but in general, we're seeing a lot of podcasts. In general, yeah. Yeah, and it's a, it's an interesting way, I think, of engaging with content because you can do it whilst you are out walking. Uh, yeah. A lot of us are not commuting at this uh, point in time, but if uh, those people who are commuting, it again, you can download it and you can listen uh, listen to it in your own time. Mm -hmm. And and what you discovered, what I hear you say, is that it's actually a very good tool for. Um, I think educating is the wrong word, but talking to consumers and mm -hmm. uh, providing some insights into what is the brand doing in terms of sustainability and also what are our values. Mm -hmm. It's yep. just more of a discussion. Yeah. It's more of a discussion. It's an open platform and it's necessar not necessarily things that are so, um, you know, when you're, when you're writing copywriting, it's very obvious that it's planned, you know, but with, with podcasting and that's, what's hard about it as well. Um, it's, it's a continuous thing and anything can come any sort of topic, any sort of, you know, um, you can get sidetracked a little bit, but that's the beauty of it. It's so raw and yeah. it's not edited. And so you get to know, even if there's little mistakes, you know, that makes the brand human instead of something that's far away. Instead of some entity, it makes a, a, the brand um, a friend of yours. Yeah. yeah. I like this idea that it makes you human, that uh, it's not perfect and it's, you don't need to retake it again and again, but simply accept that. Mm -hmm. Some sort of cough or... Sometimes I say something that I need to correct myself, but that's okay mm -hmm. because that's part of delivering something that's more authentic mm -hmm. or using a platform that's more authentic. Um, if I was a big fashion company, would I be able to use podcasts credi uh, credibly, do you think? Would it still be authentic? Yeah? I think so. I think what makes it authentic is that you have to know what you're talking about. Mm. Um and be true to it, be accountable to it. That is how you be authentic. It, uh, it's it's not determined to your business model. You can be a sustainable brand, but you can also not be authentic and vice versa. You know, yeah. you can use any brand could utilize it any any from any sector. Yeah, but you have to know what you're talking about and be passionate about it. And that's the beauty. If you um if you are um, that you can translate it quite well with podcasting, way better than um, Instagram posts or um, a, a LinkedIn posts. You know, it's just it's way more personal. So first and foremost, it's who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's interesting. So if you uh, so based on in the experience that you have obtained from doing this uh, quite the uh, in-depth research project what are your recommendations for uh, a fashion company who wants to to try out this form of uh, communication yeah i think um just don't be scared as i said um if you are authentic and if you are credible to what you are saying do not be scared to explore this platform because it really can be such a powerful tool 
um, it is something that is different and it is something that will get you closer and people to know your mission and vision long term. So it will really build consumer loyalty towards you. Mm -hmm. And really, it's such a simple tool. Don't be afraid of it. And mistakes are embraced in podcasting. So don't be too, um, you know, to, don't be too scared to try it out because you're it's something new. And yeah, don't be don't be scared of of not being perfect. Yes, don't be scared of not being perfect. It's the beauty of podcasting because that's that's the history of podcasting. It's yeah. done in somebody's back, you know, in somebody's basement, in somebody's like back car. It's, it, it's the rawness of it, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting trend, I think, going away or moving into an area where we recognize that we're not necessarily perfect and we're not necessarily quite there in terms of sustainability mm. and therefore it's okay to talk about where we're not good yet mm-hmm. or we're, where we are underway exactly. and have that vulnerability in our communication about sustainability do you think that consumers are ready to embrace that and accept that company I think working so. on sustainability I, I, I do see a change in consumer shifting um, because fashion has been for so long something that is so serious you know something that is so has to be perfect aesthetically perfect some models are always you know with all of these high expectations of a brand of a of a fashion but now we're stripping it down to basically what is the core of fashion it is something that you wear to express yourself in whatever form it is it shouldn't be it shouldn't be narrowed down to that expect that standard now it's it's opened and it's that means that they're more open to mistakes open to growth open to more conversations surrounding it so yeah it's an interesting time and it's the perfect time to explore it yeah oh i like that that sounded really uh, like a good way forward being more honest and being open being more vulnerable and admitting that vulnerability is part of being human and we are human beings behind brands Mm -hmm. and that you can express that when you talk about sustainability Mm -hmm. to a higher extent via podcast because Mm -hmm. it is it's not people doing it from the basements it's not a high-end production that you need Uh, what is what's the future looking like for you and and your brand Oh, so after after our my my research, we launched our own podcast. Yeah. We launched a podcast called Slow Conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, it talks about sustainable living and sustainable fashion, and it's been interesting to hear all of these different pr- perspectives from lots of other industry experts. And so we're learning from them, and we're sharing it with consumers as well. So hopefully, that they can learn as well. And so. Yeah, hopefully in the future we'll we'll see more growth, we'll see more relationships being built in our community and um, increasing our positive impact. Hopefully. Oh, that mm-hmm. sounds really good. And um, where, and Zilla, where can if people want to find your podcast, where are they able to find your podcast? They can find it in in Spotify, in Apple Podcasts. Yeah, it's already out right there. And that's something that I just figured out as well. Basically, if you want to start a podcast, you need a host and the host will do all of that for you. Distribute that to everywhere. So it's then distributed to all the major platforms. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking about and telling us about your research today. Yeah. And, thank you so much for having me. And podcast. I, I think it's really exciting. I'm looking forward to hear some of your podcasts. No, thank you.